So, Lizanne, welcome to our coaching session. I'm really excited so to I can't meet wait. you and get into it. So, what is it that would be really useful for you to get from our session today? What would be really helpful? I kind of need a, I need a tool mm -hmm. to keep me on, on track. Okay. I feel like a groundhog day at this moment mm -hmm. in time in my life. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm doing the same stuff and I'm safe. I'm not going out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And I need something that will allow me to push myself. Mm. Kind of need to get together like a life plan of what I want out of life. So today that's what I need. I need some sort of structure, like how do I, how do I set goals? Mm. What does that look like? If I was to write a life plan, mm. where do I start? And tell me what difference would that make for you if you, if you did get this life plan? I feel like I would be living again. Mm. I don't feel like I'm doing like that right now. Does that make sense? Tell me a bit more about that, about what living again is like. Okay, so I think maybe three or four years ago, I was living in my, in my world to the max, mm. training hard, reading, personal development, um, really challenging myself. Mm. And that stopped. Right. I just feel like I'm not doing that. I'm, uh, I feel like this isn't me. Mm. That's the only way I can describe it. It's like there is a small part of me in here yes. and I'm listening to myself going, oh, don't go to the gym, mm -hmm. you're too tired, or mm -hmm. don't worry about that book, you'll read it next week. And that's mm -hmm. not like me at all. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've got no, I've got nothing to look forward to. Right. That's it, that's exactly, I've got nothing to look forward to. I feel like I've got, sadly, no purpose. Mm -hmm. So it feels like mundane, I'm getting up, doing the same stuff, and it feels flat. Tell me a bit more what it's like when, you, when you've had purpose, when you've felt that, when you've been living to the max. Tell me maybe just what it's like when you get up in the morning or what you like when you engage with people or, you know, just how, yeah. How totally different. So it feels like um, I'm up early, mm. you know, three, four o'clock in the morning, I'd be up, mm. your brain's not switching off. Um, even now when I'm talking about it, I feel mm. that's it, I'm reliving that. Yes. Excited. Mm. like loads of energy like can't wait to get stuff done yeah. and that's not how I am right now right okay so the plan you want to think about a tool you said or a plan yeah. to help you get back to that place yeah I need I need a plan mm. I need it's like I need to write a life plan of mm. what do I want what excites me mm. I've got an end goal so I know what I want to do when I retire mm. I can see that but it's kind of the stuff in the middle mm. That seems to be, I've lost that. And how have plans played out in your life previously? Have you been planning? Are you a planner? Always. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Nice again, it's really frustrating. Um, I have a, like a, a goal sheet, which I've done since I was early 20s. Mm. So I used to write everything down, mm. what my life looked like. Um, I used to put a PowerPoint presentation with my life right now, with positive affirmations. You know, I am this now, I am successful, I'm a great mum, this, that and the other. And that stopped, mm. Mm. which is really strange. Mm. What stopped? What happened? I don't know. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know what, what changed, but it just stopped. Mm. Mm. And I don't know why. I've, I've done that a few times mm. recently and said, why have I stopped doing that? But I don't know. Okay. So if we were on a scale of one to ten, where one is got no idea where I'm going, I've got, you know, I can't even get out of bed in the morning, things are awful, um, you know, there's no purpose, no energy, no drive. And 10 is you're back at that place, yeah, where you're, you're actually, you're, you know your goals, you know what you're doing, yeah. you're waking up energised, you've got, you know, you're living life to the max. Where would you say you are now? Mm, I'm probably a four. Okay. So what makes you a four and not a zero? There's some things I'm doing. Mm. Tell me about them. Um, okay, so I started reading again. Mm. So I got some books over Christmas time. Started to get back into in the evening, starting mm. to read. Mm. Um, started training a little bit. Mm. Started to watch my diet just a bit, mm. but nowhere near what I used to do. So I've started to do some stuff. Right. Okay. But it's like I'm, I'm all, at all or nothing. Mm. This, this mediocre mm. is not me. Never been mediocre. Mm. That's why it feels weird. 
it's really interesting to think about how you've been and how you are currently. And there's a question around at this point in your in your life and where you are with everything else that's going on, what is the right thing to be? So there's definitely where you've been um, yeah. and, and there's definitely where you are, but sometimes we actually need to rethink as well what we want. Um, do we want exactly what, do you really want to be exactly as you were before? Do you, do you really want to be waking up at three o'clock in the morning and training hard and yeah. those sorts of things? Yeah, I do. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I love that. Mm. I, I, I think every day I love the getting up, I've got a purpose. Mm. I want to go to bed at night and think I've maxed out. Mm. I've done everything I can. Because mm. I think life's too short. Mm. You don't know what's around the corner. I really believe that, so I love that part. Because I know how I am with people then, I've got, you know, I interact better, I know I'm snappy now, mm. I'm sure. Mm. Uh, I'm not focused. Mm. So, yeah, I love that one. Right. I loved it when I was like that. Okay, so you really do want it? Yeah, 100%. So, there's no doubt about how much you want it. What are you, how much are you willing to do to get it? Yeah, that's the bit. Okay. I think maybe in the past, because I've set myself goals, I've not always achieved them. And I think maybe as I'm getting older, I'm feeling a bit more meh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can I really do them? Mm -hmm. So maybe there's a feeling of, oh, can I do it? Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm more scared now. Now I'm a bit, mm -hmm. I'm older. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably it. I think when I was younger, I had so much more energy, less experience, which meant I hadn't gone through some pain, whereas now I feel, ooh, that was a bit uncomfortable. Mm. I don't know if actually I'm prepared to go through that. So it's a really interesting question. Mm. Mm. I think I kind of want to guarantee. Mm. If, I, if you could say to me, Lizanne, I guarantee yeah. you'll get these. It's going to be pain free. Yeah. I'll sign up tomorrow. Right. Okay. And when you hear yourself say that, yeah. what do you think? Yeah, it does make me think, oh, okay, that's what's holding me back. Yeah. It's a bit self-doubt in there, which I've not normally had. Tell me about the experience of not achieving goals. What, what, actually, what was useful about, actually, you know, those times when perhaps you set yourself, you stretched yourself, but you didn't actually reach the pinnacle of what you wanted? But, what was what was useful in those experiences? What did I get from that? I think throughout the experiences I've I've become stronger, a lot more resilient. So I've always come away from situations and thought, okay, it didn't go to plan, but I feel stronger as an individual. So the question that's risen for me is, what if you fully trusted yourself? I'd do anything. Yeah, 100 percent. So I think, well, yeah, I'm going to do this. There is, as you're talking about it, I have this feeling of, oh, I don't know, it might not work, it might not succeed. Also, I'll tell you what it also is, I'm older. I'm 50 next year. That plays a massive part internally when I'm, when I'm thinking, I think, oh, you've not got long. That, 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 that's coming up every time we're talking now. It's like, whatever I do in life, I have to get it right. I feel like I'm on a time thing. Yeah, that's what it is. I just want to reflect on some of the things you've said to me. I want a guarantee. I don't want to experience pain. Uh, there's a sense of ur urgency that I've got to get it right. Um, and I, you know, in terms of your thinking, I wonder how, what you think those those thoughts are doing to you, yeah. How, the, how are those thoughts impacting you? They need to get things right, that sense of urgency, guarantees. Yeah, the more I talk about it, the more it's the, for me, it's around the age. Mm. So I feel like I've got 10 years mm. like within a work capacity, mm. I'm getting older. Like for me to find my soulmate, I start thinking, Oh, God, you're getting past it now. Even now when I'm talking, I hear myself thinking, oh, well, you are getting old and 
this is your last shot at everything, which is actually, that's probably really holding me back. And someone else looking at it from the outside, just say you think about a really good girlfriend or someone, what, you know, if, they, if you said that to them, what kind of, what would they say back to you, do you think? If I said to them... Yeah, my time's running out, I haven't got much time, oh. I need to get everything right and... They would laugh. Mm. And also people looking at me wouldn't believe that I'm saying that. Because mm. I don't give that aura. Mm. Everyone in, like, in my group, my circle, my friends would say, she's got it, mm. she's nailed it. Mm. No, she just makes things happen. Mm. But actually, no. Mm. I would never give that advice to my friends. If they said to me, um, oh, I'm, I'm nearly past it, I've got mm. a few more years. Oh my God. It would be a different conversation. So you'd never give that advice to your friends? Never. Mm. But strangely given it to myself. Mm. It's a confidence thing, isn't it? It's like, yeah, I don't know where that's come from as well. Have you visualised yourself beyond 10 years? Have you, can you, yeah, how much time have you spent thinking and making real that life beyond that? No, as I said to you, um, in my life I've got the... I see the retirement mm. with my little dog. Mm. See that really clearly. I'm down by the beach. I've got a nice house, but I don't know what the middle bit looks like. Mm. I'll never see that. Mm. Um, I'm so I'm very visual. Mm. So I've always got the clear pictures in my head, but I don't see what's in the middle. Do you know anyone who's that sort of 70s, sort of yeah, 60s, 70s? Do you know any people around that age group? Most of my friends, my close oh. friends are, yeah, so all the same, kind of the same age. Yeah, so th those people are, the, well, they're sort of a bit older than you, sort of, you know, 10, 20 years older than you, those, those people. It, tell me about their life, has it ended? Is it, is it you don't? <laughs> no. <laughs> no? No, not What's, at all. What sorts of things are they doing? S successful, happy, mm. with partners and... The I know, I know what I think mm. isn't true. I know it doesn't make sense. Mm. I know that I not, haven't got 10 years left. Mm. I don't know why I've suddenly put a time frame on my whole life. I've gone, right, that's it. Mm. 10 years to get everything done. Mm. It does feel like that, but I don't know where that's come from. Because mm. my sense is it's stifling you. Totally. The amount of pressure is actually crippling you in a way. It's like, I've got to get it right. So in a way, I won't take a step. Exactly yeah, it. I can't take one step forward in case it's wrong, and so I'm staying right here. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. When we're talking, it's like I feel that. Mm. So I'm staying safe. But yet you said to me, I'm resilient. I know, that's why it's a conflict. It feels like I'm really tough. I love the challenge, and yet I'm in this weird limbo y. No, I'm not going to. Mm. That's why it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not congruent with my, mm. how I really am. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Dad, I fix that then. Well, what if you were kind, kinder to yourself? What would you be doing? What would I do if I was kinder? I don't know. I don't know how that would, I don't know where to start on that. Mm. How kind do you think you are to yourself now? Probably not. Mm. With all the stuff that goes on, so obviously I have a, a mum, single mum with my daughter, um, I work really long hours. Mm. For me, I'm kind of there in the background. Mm. It's friends, family, mm. Lily, Jake, work, and I'm just kind of over there somewhere. Mm. So I always think us working women need could do with a wife. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I yeah. love one. So if you had a wife, uh, you know, what would what would she be doing for you? That perhaps you Ooh, don't do for wow. yourself. What would she do? So she does all the housework, mm. cooking, cleaning, washing, ironing, mm. shopping, sort the car out, um, helping me with my uh, my spreadsheet, finances, uh, maybe be a mentor. That'd be good. Someone to listen and, and just keep me on the straight and narrow. Um, help me with uh, Lily and the homework. Um, yeah, I've got a big list. Mm, okay, so there's a lot of activities, there's a lot of jobs to be done. Yeah. What's a treat? Treat is 
Starbucks and a book and quietness. Mm. Mm. That's tr that's a real treat. No one interrupting mm. my phone. Just mm. me and my book, snuggled in the little chair mm. with Starbucks, mm. not looking or talking to anyone. Yes. That's that's oh, that's incredible. Mm. And how how often does that happen? Um, never. Oh. <laughs> um, no. Uh, I'll I'll go to Starbucks with Lily. The coffee's there, we'll be doing homework. Mm. And then I'll try and read my book while helping her mm. do her maths. And then I think, oh my God, let's put the book down. You feel mm. really selfish because she needs my time. Mm. So that doesn't really happen. Okay. And if you were to make it happen, when could that be? If you were to make, have a little date with you in Starbucks? When I could do it on a Saturday morning. Mm. I could. If I got really early, and I could do that. I just don't feel, it's weird because as we're talking, I feel like, oh, do you deserve that? Mm. I feel selfish taking that time for me because I feel like I'm wasting time. Mm. That's what I feel, I feel like I've got so many jobs to do, mm. I've got to be here, there and everywhere. I feel, why would you, why, why are you doing that? Yeah. Mm. I don't deserve it, it's another thing that's coming up. Mm. Okay. There is something in what you said about getting back to a place that you once were and reconnecting in with that person you once were that, that needs time. I think um, you've been, I think, trying to do it but not getting back there. Um, and I, I'm wondering uh, in terms of you, how, you've, how to get back there without investing some time in yourself. Yeah, I don't invest much time. Mm. And I don't, I think it's changed for me a lot. It, so much, I have so much to do, my to-do list and my phone and a mm. list of stuff I have to do on a regular basis. I feel like I've got enough hours in the day and I would imagine most people say that anyway. Mm. Mm. Um, but yeah, I do need to take some time for myself. And on that big list, what? What, what could you stop doing? Oh, um, what could I stop doing? There's nothing on there that I can see. Because it will start with homework, with the lily, housework, shopping. Mm. Um, the, I've put, started to put training in there because that's my time. Mm. Um, it's literally every hour I have to be doing something. Mm. I'm constantly juggling stuff. Mm. There isn't anything on there that I think, I won't do that. Mm. I can't do that because it's just me. Mm. It's me and Lily. Mm. It's like, yeah, I can't, I can't not do the shopping. I can't not do the housework. Yeah. Okay. And if I was really challenging around that, so say, God forbid, you were a bit poorly. What would, what would you let go of, if you, if you really had to let go of something? Mm, that was interesting, because I was poorly a little while ago. Mm. Um, so I went into hospital, had a hernia operation. I think I had three days off. Mm. I signed off for six weeks. Oh my gosh. And um, oh, wow. yeah, I went back after, well, it's just, mm. yeah. that's just it. It just yeah. has to keep. Mm. So if I had to, let's say, God forbid, I couldn't, let's say my leg didn't work. Mm fell over, broke my leg, what would I do? What would I not do? Uh, I'd have to rely on people, and I don't do that. Mm. I don't ask for help. Mm. I don't ask for help at all. I don't know why that is either. Because there are people around me that will help me. There's something there that says, I have to do it myself. Like I don't, I don't like relying on people. I feel like I have to do it myself. Like, I'm not going to let me down. Mm. I will do it. I feel like if I'm asking other people for help, maybe I'm a bit of a burden. Or maybe they say no. Mm. Hmm, that's interesting. Do people ask you for help? Always. I'm the one. Mm. I can need help, mm. anything, you know, anything. Yeah. I'm there all the time. Even at the detriment of my stuff, I still think, leave it to me, you can rely on me, mm. I'll do it. Mm. But I won't ever do that the other way around. 
I'd never ask for help, never. It's interesting, isn't it? I wonder why that is. When you hear yourself say it, what do you think? Yeah, why is that? I feel like asking for help feels like I've failed a little bit. Like I can't cope. But yeah, that's how I feel. I think that I feel like the perception of me is I'm some superwoman. Like I've got this. I do everything. And I feel like asking for help feels like people think, oh, she's not that superwoman. Yeah, that's how I think. And if they did think you're not superwoman, how would you feel? I think I feel quite sad. I feel like it's, in, it's always been important to me when I've been growing up that the expectation is high for me, that people see me as a strong, fearless, independent woman. I felt like there was a stigma around being a single parent as well, like, she won't cope. She'll, she's going to be needy and she's, gonna, she's not going to be able to do this. And that's something I've probably, that drives me all the time. It's like I feel like I have to say to the world, do you know what, I've got this. Mm. Actually, you're wrong. Mm. I can do this. If anything, I'm better. Mm. So there's that constant. And I can see how that would have served you early, early at some point, you know, to, yeah. to tell yourself, I've got this and I can yeah, cope absolutely. and I can manage. And, um, and I, so I think it's a very strong message. I'm also wondering about the fact that sometimes we can overplay the strengths that we have. Yeah. And then they can end up holding us back. So if we, you know, if I, if I overplay this strong woman, then, then suddenly I can never be vulnerable. And how that could be an issue. Absolutely. I, weirdly for me, vulnerability is something I look for in my friends. I'll always try and break them down. It's like, show me who you really are. Mm -hmm. Like I know, like some of them are, you know, they might be having tough times. It's like, just be honest with me, be open. Mm. And yet for me, vulnerability is something that very few people will see that. Mm. They'll always look and think, she's got it, she's nailed it. Yeah. No one would ever think, wow, she's sitting there, she's struggling. It's like there's a real armour. Mm. There's a book, Shonda Rhimes, um, she um, wrote Grey's Anatomy or produced Grey's Anatomy um, yeah. and she's got a book, Start, uh, The Year of Yes, and I don't know if you've come across it, but she talks about the fact that she writes her stories for her characters, but in the end she wrote a story of her life and realised that she was playing a character um, and it took a realisation to help her realise that actually that story she wrote wasn't really her. And I think we can all do that. We can form the person that we want everyone to see and the person we want to be. Um, but there's also times when we might need to reevaluate that character and think, I've, I've, I've displayed this character for a long time and it's been great, but actually there's something else I need people to see now in order for me to keep moving forward. Is this character still serving me? Yeah. You're right. I, I think I feel I've. That's that's the part I've played. It's it's quite weird because I'm really childlike. Mm. So when I'm with Lily, mm. that's the real me, mm. like childish, jumping the puddles mm. when it was snowing, we had a snow day, oh. and uh, people rarely see that. Because mm. then it's like I go into, okay, I'm here. Mm. What do you want? What do you need from me? Even down to my family, I think, to a degree, will, wouldn't see that childlike person. So it's, um, it's interesting that you say that. I think I've played this part as a protective mechanism for such a long time mm -hmm. that actually does it serve me now. Mm -hmm. It would be really nice to be able to say, oh, dear friend Sharon, um, help. Actually, look, can we just talk through this today? Mm. That's something I just wouldn't do. Mm. You know, they would call me and say, can I talk to you about something? Yeah, yeah, fine. Even if underneath, I think, oh, I'm, I need to talk to you today. I've had a rubbish day at work. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't do that. Mm. And you sound really firm in that. I wouldn't do that. Absolutely. No, it's just, I think it's because I've done it for such a long time. Mm. It's that feeling of, 
what would they think of me? Mm. Like, if actually they knew mm. I'm not this super strong alpha, mm. actually a little quivering wreck in the corner sometimes. What would they think of you? I don't know. I don't know because I've never asked them. Mm. And they've never seen that either. Mm. I don't know. Mainly they might think actually it's quite cool because I'm actually a human being, not some robot. Mm. I swear people think I am a robot and there is no feeling in here. It's mm. just invincible. Mm. So maybe they think I'm a bit more approachable. Mm. Possibly. What's the worst that could happen? What's the worst thing that could happen? Nothing. But I can't see them not talking to me mm. and saying, right, that's it. You're binned as a friend now because you're human. Um, I don't know, I've never thought about that. I don't think anything bad would happen. Mm. Maybe make feel, made them feel better, because I think maybe I give off this... Maybe that, um, that I'm better than them, so that must make them feel... And that's not something I deliberately do, mm. but that, oh, I've got this in control, you haven't. So if anything, it might make them feel a bit more comfortable. Mm. Like we're on the level. Mm. Mm. So tell me what you're taking from our conversation so far today. What well, like actually listening to me and thinking, it's not about the time. Mm. It's not that I don't have the time. Mm. I'm choosing not to do it. Mm. And also I'm telling myself I'm really busy. Well, actually, am I really busy? Actually, am I focusing on the right things? Mm. Is this this whole protective mechanism that just says, I can't do this, I'm really busy, and... Mm. And maybe I'm a little bit afraid to break that down, because that's like my whole wall of mm. work, busy, mm. super mum. Mm. Maybe that if I was to break that down and go, actually, have you just built up a whole wall of busyness to protect yourself, but who's to break that down? Come on. And it's, it's having that honest conversation to go, Lizanne, come on, get real. Mm. Like, you say you want this, mm. but you're not prepared to do anything because you're so busy over here doing mm. stuff. But actually, do you really need to do this? Mm. So it's, yeah, it's really interesting. When you say it out loud as well. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to really affirm you, to be honest. Um, you know, you are doing amazingly. I know you've got a big job. Thank you. Um, you've got your, your little girl and you sound really committed to supporting her. You know, you're talking about, I have to do the homework with my daughter. You know, you've got such commitment and also this commitment to moving yourself forward, to not just saying, yeah, this is, this is how it is and this is how it will always be. Actually, I want to get back somewhere. Yeah. Um, and actually coming and having this conversation about it. All of those things, you know, just show your passion for life and your commitment to yourself. So taking a moment to think about actually, you know, I, I am doing a good job. Yeah, yeah I am Thank doing you. a good job is really important for you. Thank you. I think you don't get that either. Mm. Because you have no one else around you, do mm. you? So you don't have a... the wife mm. that yes. says, yeah. well done, mm. you nailed it today. Mm. It's just me. Yeah. That could sometimes be quite lonely as well. Mm. You know, Lily's 10. Mm. I don't expect her to say, Mum, you did an amazing job. It's really lovely to hear that. So think about our conversation. What, if you were just to think about some things that could be helpful for you going forward. You, you talked about starting to plan as, as something that you, you want uh, to do. Um, thinking beyond thinking beyond 10 years and you know thinking about a bit more of a setting some goals and planning just thinking about what we've discussed and some of the sort of moments that seem to spark thoughts for you today if you were going to take some small steps in that direction what would you what might you do to help you i would this sheet that i talk about like the, my friend in my life will laugh but it's a my goal sheet I don't think it's actually real. Mm. I think it's just a list of stuff that I put on there mm. that makes me feel like I'm doing it. Yeah. And it feels like it's my comfort blanket in a weird way because I feel like 
oh, I'm doing it. Yep, tick box. It's the goal list. I've looked at it, reviewed it. But actually, I think I would like to go back to it and really look at that and go, what's real on there? What do you actually want? Rather than what you believe people want me to have. What do I actually want? Mm. Kind of like stripping everything away and going, what's really important? Because mm. I look at it every day. Mm. There's silly things on there. And what happens is I just put it into the following year and say, we'll definitely do that next year. Mm. You know, there's a swim with the dolphins and other bits and pieces, but I don't make it real. So what I would do is, and that's really going out of my comfort zone, Look at this sheet I've created for years and list everything that I really want. It's like I'm recreating my whole life again. That's a big step for me as well. There might be some, you know, I don't know how many things are on your list, but maybe, maybe limit it to just three things that you're definitely going to do. Oh, OK. That doesn't feel big. Yeah. It, well, achieving them will be. OK. Achieving three things that you really want, rather than looking at a list of a hundred things that you're not doing. Think about the energy with that. Yeah. Think about the energy of achieving these three things versus looking at this list and thinking, I still haven't done that, I still haven't done that. That's exactly it. Yeah, because it's actually, it feels like a constant failure. Every time I'm looking at it, I think, oh my God, I've not done that this year. Oh, I've not done that this month. Yeah. So it feels overwhelming. Yeah, and if you get those three things done quickly, you can always add three more. Yeah. Yeah, but you would have done them. You would have achieved something. Mm. That would be important as well, that sense of, I actually have done it. Mm. OK, yeah, I can do that. What else might you do? And it's, yeah, what else might you do to, just thinking about our conversation, you definitely want to revisit this goal sheet and strip it back. What else might you do? You would say about the vulnerability. Uh, the asking for help. That's a big one. It doesn't have to be the, the big gesture. What's the tiniest thing you could move your, to move yourself in the direction of just being a little bit more open or sharing or vulnerable, whatever, however you want to describe it? I don't know. What would I, even now thinking about it, I have this feeling of, oh my God, mm. who do I need? Mm. They're going to see. Um, I could do something, I could ask someone to look after Lily for a short time mm. while I went to the gym. Mm. That feels weird, because mm. <laughs> I've never done it, but I could do it. Mm. It's good for Lily, because mm. she'd be spending some time with her friends, and it'd be good for me because I get a break and I can do some, I could do my coffee mm. at night. Mm. Okay, I could do that. That's a small thing, but also a massive thing yeah. for me. Yeah. How sure are you that you would do that? Scale of one to ten, probably a seven. Mm. It's the doing it. Mm. feels weird. Like, even now I'm thinking, oh, my God, mm. how am I going to ask? And it's no big deal. Mm. Mm. But it's the, it's the feeling of them then thinking, she can't cope. But maybe I'm doing myself a disservice to my friends and family because maybe they want to look after Lee. Mm. And actually I'm stopping them from doing that because I have to say that I'm some super mum. Mm. What could help you do this? Because I can hear yourself talking yourself in and out of that. <laughs> you know, it's like, I am going to do it, no, I'm not going to do it. And, and the challenge is you leave this room and you think, I, I, that's a great intention, but then you talk yourself out of it on the drive home. Or yeah. What could help? What could really help you if, you if you think that's a good thing to do? A good thing to do would be if I actually booked something, I'm committed mm. to that time then. Mm. So it's easy to get out of a coffee because mm. it's just me. Mm. Oh, I can be, oh, it doesn't matter. But if I've booked onto something, I've got my hair appointment or a facial, mm. I have to go, mm. then it feels, because I don't want to let that person down, yeah. the hairdresser down, mm. or the, the person I booked the facial in. So that, yeah, that makes it more real. Because okay. then I have to be there. Okay, good. So it sounds like the first small step in terms of your 
being a bit more vulnerable is to book yourself a bit of some kind time, something kind for you. Yeah. And then you're going to have to find someone, you know, uh, ask a friend to uh, to look after Lily. Yeah. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. It's a treat as well. Yes. Okay. And we talked about being kind. Yeah. I can do That's that. That's what your wife would have booked for you. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Okay. What else? Is there anything else floating in there? I'm not going to ask you to, com you know, commit to anything, but is there anything else floating in your mind? You're thinking, oh, I could do that. I could do this. Or, you know, if I, if I wasn't limiting myself, this might be something I'd do. Definitely the training, like going to the gym, mm. was really important to me. I, I used to train like four or five hours a week. Um, Lily goes to her dad's on a Wednesday, a Friday and a Saturday and weirdly enough I've stopped that and yet training gave me, I love training, so my background was a personal trainer, I used to love teaching, loved the fitness side, loved the feeling after teaching, going to a spinning class and it's like I've stopped that and yet I adore it. To the point that when I'm on the cross trainer, I can feel myself laughing. Mm. I, you know, I look and think, well, people must think I'm weird. But I love it yeah. so much. And I've stopped doing that. And that's something I love. Mm. So it's not even like a chore. It's not like, mm -hmm. I absolutely enjoy doing that, but stop doing it. Feels like you've been punishing yourself. Yes. In a way, it's something I love so much and I'm holding myself back from yeah. doing it. Yeah, weird because it's like I finish work on a Friday and always the intention is Friday, get to the gym, you know you love it. And it's like I get in and I talk myself out of it. And when I used to teach people, I used to say, never do it. Mm. Get your gym bag ready, get your stuff, get your kit, go straight out, you'll feel amazing. Mm. If you focus on how you feel afterwards, right? so I know this stuff. Mm. And um, yeah, on a Friday I go, nah, it's cold. Let's not do it. So tell me where the gym bag is. Uh, in my wardrobe. Okay. Mm -hmm. What if you were doing it in a different order? What if you, what if you didn't go home and have to open the wardrobe to get the bag out? Tell me, tell me what you could do to make it easier for yourself. Okay, so I could have the gym bag in my car, mm -hmm. so I could drop Lily off, um, have my kit right on, mm -hmm. get my gym bag in the car drive, go straight there. I could easily, I could easily do that, but I choose not to do that. It does feel like I'm punishing myself, like I'm wallowing in this self-pity to go, oh no, and then I'll get up on Saturday to go, oh, see so you didn't train. Oh yeah, look at you. But it's crazy, because I love it. It's breaking that, isn't it? Just that habit. Yeah, I need to just put my gym bag in the car and just go. That's a good start. Or oh, oh, is there anyone you can do it with who's going to be relying on you? Mm. If I booked a class, if I booked a class on a Friday and I cancel, I have to pay for it. Ah, okay. So that would make me feel, ooh. Yes, okay. So I could do that. Good. Yeah. Booking things in seems to be a key point yeah, for definitely. you. Yeah, definitely. Makes me feel accountable. Mm. I don't want to cancel and I'll let people down. Mm. Okay, so I could book the class. I can easily do that gym bag, in the car, book the class, mm. go there. Mm. Then I start feeling good, you know, I'm looking after myself, mm. stress levels reducing, some training, mm. I'm giving some time to myself. I think incredibly well when I'm training, because mm. I've got that personal space again. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we can do that. Great. Okay. So I think we're probably coming to the end of our time together. So mm. I know it's never <laughs> enough. So tell me what you're taking from our session and what you're committing to from our session. So I am, I've learned a lot actually about myself. Mm. That I'm not actually, I am busy, but I'm busy avoiding the stuff I really want to do. Mm. I've not been honest with myself and I've put up barriers that I'm saying to the world, Actually, I'm some super mum. I actually am not. You know, I'm quite soft and fuzzy and warm and vulnerable. I'm not being kind to myself. And that's why I'm in this whole Groundhog Day stuff. That I'm going to commit to training. I'm going to spend some time with myself. And I'm going to be vulnerable, so I'll put myself out there. 
it's actually really, really interesting. When you listen to yourself talking through it, you think, wow, oh, wow. And the sheet, I'm changing that sheet. Mm. So actually I think it's some great thing. Actually, it completely needs changing. Yeah. It's been great. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very, very Thank much. Thank you so much. <laughs>